Good morning, good morning, good morning. Buenos dias, mi gente. Yogi, welcome to Daily Discipline number 588. Primarily in a row, my name's Rob Hoback. Happy that you're here. Honored and humbled that you keep coming back like for reals. Hey, it's a hump day. Hump day! It's for you, Aunt Barb. Hope you're doing well. It's 52720, and it's time to get to work, so let's do it. First things first, still the realist. I'm also rigid. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to Sam about this this morning. Um, thankfully, he was awake. He woke up and was able to hang out with me this morning because he went to bed at a normal time last night. And we were just talking about the Michael Jordan, Kobe, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, LeBron, all these guys that in sports, right, because they're more visible. But you apply the same success filter, uh, business, life, and you find that the people that are the most successful also have a high degree of rigidity. They're like, look, this is the way it's going to be. Take it or leave it. And so, um, yeah. I'm rigid at times. It is what it is. All right. Uh, moving on to real talk is always remember that children are a gift, right? Always remember that children are a gift. The reason this is on my mind, a couple of reasons. Number one, um, there's a story that's been on the news here locally about these two little kids, a three-year-old little girl and a two-year-old little boy, Miracle and Tony, uh, little African-American kids uh, that have been missing. And the last video like the last time anybody saw them was on a surveillance video. They lived at this um, apartment complex with, that was next to a body of water. Apparently there was a uh, uh, steps that went down there. The mother was incapacitated. Uh, they woke her up and said, hey, where are your kids? And she's like, I don't know. I've been asleep um, and didn't seem to be too worried about them at all. She's, she didn't even have custody for them. And so um, all I can think about is like, she doesn't care. She doesn't care that her kids are missing because she's in such a, a place. Um, and, you know, they've kind of brushed over that. Like, well, she didn't have custody of the kids. Then what the hell are they doing there? And, um, all I could think is that it's easy to be mad at the mother, right? It is. It's easy to be mad at her, mad at the parents, whoever was responsible for them. But let's remember that those people were treated like they were insignificant too, Right. That's my assumption. I could be wrong, right? Usually people that grow up in a solid foundation, right? A family where they understand the value of a human life, the value of people uh, of operating within a family unit and how a family unit can keep people uh, from making bad decisions generally don't end up in that position. Now, people that have been treated like there have been an inconvenience and uh, the, the way a lot of people treat their children um, they then grow up to be adults that treat their children like that. And so, uh, this morning on the news came out that, uh, you know, they found a little, uh, a child's body in a different river, which makes you think, oh my God, it was, you know, like 20 miles away. It's just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. That's number one. Number two is that I've, I've had babysitter problems this week. Uh, my babysitter finally just completely bailed on me last night, um, or yesterday afternoon. Last night, she, she bailed at the last minute yesterday, so I had my kids here all day, which was extremely difficult uh, to get anything done. And then, um, you know, last night, she let me know that she wasn't coming back uh, due to some family things. And so as annoying as that is, and as, as annoyed as I was yesterday, because all I really wanted to do was work, right? It's not that I'm lazy and I don't want to do my work. I want to sit here. I don't want to be disturbed. I want to be rigid. I want to do my work, but I can't do that when I have a little four-year-old who uh, requires my attention, who wants my attention, who doesn't want to, you know. And so I have to remember, like, hey, this is just part of the deal. The, the Jack didn't choose this crisis. Addison didn't choose it. I didn't choose it. You know, it's a pandemic. It affects all of us. And so I just have to do the best that I can um, and remember that my children are a gift and that I need to treat them that way. Um, I cannot imagine not caring um that my two little children were missing. It just breaks my heart, breaks my heart for that woman. If she ever gets, to, you know, in a right frame of mind, she, she, can you imagine how she would feel the rest of her family that actually care? Um, and for those little babies, just breaks my heart. Anyway, remember your children are a gift. Moving on to our thank yous. Number one, God's been good to us in the good times and the bad. There's no denying that. I'm thankful for my daddy duty, right? As, as inconvenient as it was yesterday, there were so many great things that happened yesterday. Um, just got to spend time with Jack and, you know, Addie and, and, and Sam, right? And um, just very, very fortunate. Uh, I'm thankful for all of them. Obviously, Sam, Addie, and Jack, thankful that, that Sam got up this morning. We were able to spend some time together. 
and watching Sissy do her thing yesterday. Uh, I, I really believe that girl's a mermaid. Like the, since the pool, it warmed up a little bit. And yesterday it was like 75 degrees and she went swimming three or four times. Uh, I'm thankful for early mornings. It's my favorite time of the day. Um, I love the fact that Sam was up this morning. We had like, uh, you know, a teenager and a dad conversation. Thanks. I will remember that conversation for a long time. I hope you remember it forever. I'm thankful for the YMCA, which is back open. Uh, they reached out to me yesterday to talk about coaching football this year. That's coming. Stay tuned. And I'm thankful for sports, right? And, you know, I talk about sports a lot because, number one, it's a welcome distraction for the monotony of life. Although inside of sports, there's monotony inside of there, too. That was one of my favorite things about Kobe. He was like, look, it's easy to fall in love with the games. But what you got to do is you got to fall in love with the grind going to the games, right? Um, like Brett Favre, you say, you don't pay me. I don't get paid to play on Sundays. I'll do that for free. I get paid to do all the work getting ready to play on Sunday. So just thankful. It seems that we're waking back up and we're ready to go. And we continue to pray uh, for the safety of everybody who sees us, everybody out there, that COVID will, uh, you know, that the, the curve has flattened, that it stays that way. And we're able to return to some sort of normality in our lives and get back to some of the things that make, uh, that bring us joy, like sports. With that, we're done for the day. Hands up. Peace out. We're better together. Appreciate you stopping by on a hump day. I'll be back tomorrow on a thankful Thursday. See you then. Deuces. Hashtag real talk. Love you guys. Bye.